Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for the 200th week on the podcast. Great milestone for us here, as always, Ryan Boniface and Jose Neuer. How are we, guys? Good, thank you. Brilliant, means, thanks, Lee. Means we're eight weeks away from four years. That's no. it, that's what I was going to say. So we're, we're on a regular show here, but we, when we get to the four-year anniversary, we will have a special anniversary show for that. But great stuff. We thank you, everyone out there listening, supporting us. You have got us to this 200th milestone. Follow us on Twitter at listen to I N, listen to I N. Search for Joe all over social media. Just stick Jose Neuer, Inspiration Nation into your Google machine. And like people right now, you can join us live on TikTok as we record. So we are this week, we're continuing from our show last week. Joe read us. Um, read to us from you got it up there I forget all the words Joe because it's a long one the boy the thing the thing and the horse <laughs> the thing this isn't um, Stephen Carpenter is that right this isn't like that film I so, apologise yeah. the, the boy the mole the fox and the horse with some great lessons in there it's a great animated film over Christmas um, some great lessons in it um, we shouted out to the author um on twitter this week and he gave us a lot of back so we appreciate you for doing that as well as he has inspired our work so we hand over to you joe and like last week you're going to read out and stop at a few yeah. bits to talk about the inspirational messages yeah so just a little recap for those people who didn't actually you know who haven't actually you know seen or watched us on the live so not seen it or you know you're not cut up but essentially it's the, the and i've pop- confessed on that joe because i didn't see it over christmas and you can tell by my great rendition of the title earlier you introduced me to this last week but i'm glad you did because i very much enjoyed it yeah yeah and i think it's a really good thing and again people may not know the story i hadn't heard of it until that christmas time like before just before christmas it all came out um, my wife obviously just got the book because she got recommended it and she read it to me and i thought oh my god i had tears in my eyes because such it was just such a great story but yeah so it's you know, the boy the mole the fox and the horse by charlie mackesy brilliant artist if you just go to his website it's fantastic and uh, i'll pop a, a link in the website but essentially what's happened is boy meets the mole mole goes they they they, they find a fox and essentially the fox uh we've got to the bit where the fox is in a snare and the mole is scared of the fox but the fox even though it's an enemy releases the fox and there that's the bit we got to and there's a few life lessons so if you want to if you do want to explore those life lessons as lee always says go back to the previous podcast episode 199 and you're going to get the life lessons from there and take them there but we're at the as lee said we're at the point where um the the boy actually uh just sort of says to the to the mole well done for releasing the fox which is an enemy right and the fox did say that he's going to eat that, that, he'd, that he'd kill the mole so it's almost how we face our enemies. That was the last sort of lesson we draw, we actually talked about as we, we wrapped up the podcast. So I'll just continue with the story then in that case. So there he is. There's the boy. Just sort of hold it up there. Um, and the mole there. I don't know if I better do it to both there. So you did well. One of our greatest freedoms, said the mole, is how we react to things. And we're just like a little bit of artwork there. I'm going to start showing the artwork things. It's quite nice as well. Oh, look. Lovely morning, said the mole. Shall we get going? So again, they're just out. Just walk in. And I'm going to do as usual. I am going to actually pause when I think there's the life lesson. You can tell me to pause as well. Whoops, you're rolling, cried the boy. You look like a snowball. No, a mobile. No, a mobile. A snow mole. Stop rolling. Goodness me, said the mole. And just having a bit of fun rolling down the hill. Oh, gosh, no, the river. Look out. So just going down, rolling towards the river. Tension. Need tense music there. And the mole goes into the water. I'm getting better at this actually the mole goes into the water take my hand what it says and then oh no the fox and the fox starts to come by the river so we'll see what happens and the fox is going by the river you can see the fox there you can see that okay guys on tiktok there we go just going by the river and there you go the fox saves the mole so thank you said the mole thank you said the boy so they're just congratulating the fox and give him a bit of a cuddle. Oh, the fox is back. And they're walking together down sort of like together now. So almost. Oh, the fox is back. Do you think he's coming with us? Asked the boy. Oh, I do hope so. Maybe he's lost too. I think everyone feels a bit lost sometimes, said the mole. I know I do. So I'm going to stop there. So about being lost. Have you guys ever sort of experienced anything like that or anything in your world around being lost at all? Like in metaphorically? I was going to say um, metaphorically or literally, because the answer is yes to both of them. Yeah, same. <laughs> You're same here, actually. 
do you want to give any examples of, of how, what, what what that might be or or anything like that so once i can't remember what it was it was a college and we were out doing paintballing and we were playing capture the flag and i decided to make a break for the flag i ran out into the middle of the forest grabbed the flag suddenly had no idea that what direction i should be going in heard everyone shouting that way that way couldn't see a person i was completely lost and disorientated okay oh you wanted the metaphorical one not the literal one <laughs> oh i love that <laughs> well it doesn't matter any you do um i think it's just sometimes when when you for me it's, it's it's about direction so when you've got really big potentially insurmountable feeling experiences ahead of you it's just that feeling of not knowing where to start or where to go or how you know not even being able to visualize the end result but knowing that you've got this this kind of mountain to climb and i think i think that happens less the older you get because your experience starts to help fill that in you know things do get overcome and you know, something that might take two years feels like an eternity. But again, that's, you know, two years now to me feels like nothing. Sure, it feels like even less than nothing to you, Joe, at your grand old age. Um, but I've definitely had those moments where you just, yeah, you don't know where you're going or you know where you want to go, but it just seems like it's an impossible journey. Moving towards those goals that you may not think you'll ever accomplish them, maybe they're too large yes. or you think they're too large. It's just massive. And yeah, I mean, or it's just, you know, it's out of your reach. It's something you'd yeah. never be able to attain, even though it's where you want to go. Ryan, what about you? Anything? I think I think if you look at um, the story in particular, like the mole was just saved. I don't, know, I don't want to get too literal in the story, but if you envisage that, you know, you've gone down the wrong path or you've had a, a change or you've had an issue that you've either saved yourself from or somebody saved you from, it's very easy to, to not know where to go next it's very easy to kind of get confused with what the right decision is because you you've been burnt you know you, you've perhaps taken the wrong path or you made the wrong decision and you've been burnt by the the flame of the of wrongdoing or whatever and you know you it's, it's sometimes you're you really are unsure of the right way to go and i think i've definitely had that and i imagine the pair of you are somewhat similar as well yeah definitely and, and thanks ryan for, for actually sort of bringing the story in and saying obviously the fox was you know the, sorry the, the mole was saved in the end and of that deed was that they he released the fox from the snare and and that happened it's almost like you don't know what you do is going to have an impact later on down the line i think there's a lot of in that in that story so thanks for that and uh, the minor i was lost and um you know sort of building on what you guys have said is for me what was my mental health was like my depression i I, I told this before where when I was in my mental, you know, when I was I had anxiety and depression, I just felt I was doing a rinse and repeat. I think I've said this before in the podcast where I was just coming to work, getting up, going to work, coming home, going to sleep and doing a cycle of rinse and repeat. And I, and I felt lost. I felt, you know, my lost, my, my version of lost, like this mole was saying that, you know, the mole was saying, and, you know, was saying for me, it's like, what, why am I here? What's the purpose? And I felt lost. I felt like, you know, what, what, what's the point of me being here? You know, is this it? Is this the whole point of it? So, you know, that's where I think for me, it's what it speaks to me is that, you know, we all sometimes feel lost. And I felt very lost at that point. And I needed to sort of find what my purpose was about. And that's why, you know, we're doing this together. You know, I'm glad we're so together doing this sort of thing, because for me, this drives my purpose. And I no longer feel lost. I feel like, oh, I now know, for me, it's about trying to help others. And helping you know helping myself as well firstly and trying to get better and be better and you know and pass on anything that i learn you know through coaching and things like that and and this podcast you know sharing mental health and that everybody goes through it and you know sometimes you're going to feel lost sometimes you're not going to know where your particular direction is you've got a general direction but you're heading in that way but you don't necessarily i think lee's talked about before you don't necessarily know the exact steps or the exact detail and in fact you don't need to know the details just as long as you're heading in the in the sort of right direction you will find a way and those are things I really struggle with um, because I want a specific outcome. So that was my lost part. And I, and that was a really big moment in life that, you know, I might not have been here, but I did, I've, I got help and, 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 you know, the rest, as you say, is history and looking backwards now, you know, I had to go through that to get to this point, which is painful. I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but I wouldn't change it because I wouldn't be here in front. I wouldn't be here with you guys. So um, yeah, that was my lost moment. And that's a really big lost moment in my life um, in terms of my own personal mental health. And of course I've lost my mum. Um, and again, there's a certain, you know, you have a guiding person and they're not there anymore, but I'm imagining now, you know, coming, you know, soon going to be the anniversary for my mum passing that I'm, you know, I'm trying to think of 
test it you know my mum's still inside me here and i know she would sort of want me to continue the things that i'm doing so anyway getting a bit deep there um but there's well, a lot of things coming out of me can yeah, i just touch it before you move on there was an early okay. point you made as well Go on. which was the almost the first line when you started reading was the how we react to a situation was it one of the only freedoms we have or a freedom we're gifted something like that and i just i just love that because i think we've talked about this so much during the podcast that it's you know what can you control and what can't you and number one on that list is how you respond or react to a situation and i think referring to it in the way it, it did there just really resonated with me i really like that i think that's an important point yeah, absolutely. I think it was the mile, wasn't it? It, was, um, it says one of the greatest freedoms is how we yeah, react yeah. to things, said the mile. And that was the end at the I end of that. like that one. Yeah, I mean, it's literally, literally, you know, that fear that it was feeling, you know, going to release that. So, yeah, it's a really big, you know, so again, I said before, this book is not, you know, it's, it's dissolved. You can see, obviously, it's like for, for children, but actually there's massive lessons in here that actually in a way that accessible for everybody. And that's why I love it. Um, anyway, so we just got the bit where it says, you know, he says here, maybe he's lost too well i think everyone feels a bit lost sometimes said them all i know i do and so they're just sort of walking into the forest there i know what a home looks like said them all do you yes it has walls a roof a bell above the door and cakes in the window i think that's a cake shop said the boy oh is that not a type of home you can't live in a cake shop well they why ever not <laughs> what leak on i could <laughs> you could yeah sure a lot of us could um i think home is where warm and kind uh, sorry i think home is where somewhere warm and kind with lights oh said the mole so they're just in the woods and they see the horse hello hello have you been here a while asked the boy it feels that way said the horse are you lost no we are said the mole but we have a plan. He's talking to the horse there. Ooh, the snow on the trees. It really does look just like icing, said the mole. You're obsessed. So he's just enjoying the scene there. Doing nothing with friends is never doing nothing, is it? Said the boy. No, replied the mole. And they're just having a little play. It's so time of friends. I am so small, said the mole. Yes, replied the boy but you make a huge difference. So what are we doing? Asked the horse. We're on a quest for cake, replied the mole. Are you now? No, not really. We're following the river to find our home. How far is it? We don't know, said the boy. Well, let's get going then. And so they're going with the horse and the fox is following behind. How fast can you run? Asked the boy. Well, said the mole. I wouldn't say I was a natural athlete, but I did once win a digging competition. I am i don't mean you. Oh, I see, said the mole. So he's talking to the horse, I think. Oh, golly, said the mole. So the horse is starting to, to run. And he starts to run. And guess what's happened? The boy's starting to fall off the horse. Oh, no. You fell. But I've got you, said the horse. Sorry, said the boy. It was an accident, said the mole. It's my fault. I let go, said the boy. Oh, gosh, sorry, sorry. Ah, now, said the horse. Tears fall for a reason, and they are your strength, not weakness. So have we got anything from that? Where it's fallen from the horse, and then the tears fall. I just, that line, I just love that line. Tears fall for a reason, and they are strength. They are your strength, not weakness. What do you make of that? Is there anything that comes up for you? I think it's okay to... to to feel and express emotion when you need to right there's huge huge waves around mental health especially men's mental health these days and that it's okay to feel things and it's okay to, to need to process them or, or be upset about them and, and and i assume that applies i assume that's that's kind of what we're getting at we're kind of kind of saying here that it it's not the end of the world and sometimes you just need to take that five minutes and then dust yourself off try and go again or, or pick yourself up or or formulate a plan on picking yourself up. You know, it doesn't have, things don't have to be huge, gigantic steps. As long as you take a small step, then that's progress, right? You're absolutely right, Ryan. This is about vulnerability, isn't it? I think, you know, like you said, Ryan, I think you're absolutely right. You know, when I suffer my mental health, and I did say I want to sort of maybe focus the podcast, well, for me, from my point, when I'm doing these things, like focus a little bit more on mental health, because that's one thing I've actually gone, gone through 
come out the other side. And one of the things was about mental health is that you back in the day we couldn't really talk about it. You know, it was growing up with stiff up a lip, pull your socks up, all that. And now, you know, I I do actually cry and I let the emotions out. And um, my wife sometimes says, "Oh, you're crying again," but I literally am okay with feeling that emotion because literally I almost wear my emotion when when I'm like watching a film or something like, or, or I get a response to, it, I will actually let out. I used to try and suppress it, but now I let that emotion flow. And that's my vulnerability. But like it says, you know, by me doing that and feeling those emotions, it's actually a strength. Being able to process my emotions is a strength. It's now a strength rather than, you know, perceiving as anything that's weak. And being able to speak to you about actually, you know, sometimes I do feel tearful. You know, that is okay. And I will tell people that, you know, depending on what the situation is. Even last night when I was watching the television, James Arthur, I don't know if you know James Arthur, I don't know, he's the guy who won X Factor. There was a oh, show I didn't like know I X Factor, but I, I know who he is. He won X Factor, and I had known that he suffered with mental health, and he was actually on a program last night, and I didn't know this, and he actually gave up his music and was on the edge because of mental health, um, and he felt he couldn't express his emotions and things like that, he was suppressing it, and so it shows that, you know, there was a lot out there, like Ryan says, I think you hit the nail on the head, that for, for us guys, there's still that element of, hey, you know, stiff up a little, you know, you're a guy, you know, and I think we need to break those down. And of course, we can be strong, but we, you know, we can have moments where we're vulnerable. And I think vulnerability is a strength. And so, yeah. So, Ryan, thanks for that. I really think that was a really good shout. But I say, I was, I was actually, you, you just reminded me of that James Arthur thing because I was, you know, watching the Harry thing. And I switched over, and then James, I was got hooked on it because it was just such a powerful thing. And now he's getting through it, and it shows that we can all, we can come through it. And I think Ryan, that's what you're alluding to, right? You can, you know, if you just hold on in there. You know, you've got good friends around you and just keep moving. You can get through it, but not to underestimate that it's a feeling and, and you know, you feel dark sometimes, but you will get through it if you just just do those small things. Like you said, you know, get up, you know, even getting up in the morning can be the, the win, right? Just getting up and brushing your teeth. That could be the win for your day. So just keep moving forward. Just keep keep doing it and you will eventually get there. Ready for another one then? Should we do another one? Absolutely. All right. So I'm just going to reread that because it's really powerful. I'm going to read that. So tears fall for a reason and they are your strength, not weakness. I think you believe in me more than I do, said the boy. You'll catch up. So again, he's got a little bit of mental there. Life is difficult, but you are loved. So again, you know, this thing we talk about, guys, you know, this sort of stuff can sort of hit, oh, you know, that loved piece. So again, but you are, there's someone out there. Look, lights, that's like a home. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Said the mole. So he's looking for his home. The fox never really speaks, whispered the boy. No, and it's lovely he is with us, said the horse. So they're falling together. So the fox isn't saying a lot. To be honest, I often, this is the fox saying this, by the way. To be honest, I often feel I have nothing interesting to say, said the fox. Being honest is always interesting, said the horse. What's the bravest thing you've ever said, asked the boy. Help said the horse i'm going to stop there i like that that's a good point to stop go on you just i just think i meant to watch the, the asking for help you know that acknowledgement that it is it can be a challenge for people and it is if you find it easy or if you find it difficult it is a brave thing to do because it's building on the vulnerability piece you're putting yourself out there aren't they and i think it's important for people to know that and that it's okay to do it and you know acknowledge that it does take courage to do it suit too right i think a lot of times we don't want to ask for help do we because we want to think well i want to be able to work this out myself and again i think it's you know and i think you know whoever's watching whether you know whatever gender you are i think you know sometimes we you know we find it difficult to ask for that help and i just and again going back to mental health thing again i found it really difficult to ask for help um i didn't want to say to my leader that i'm struggling and then it all came out. I had to say something that I had to. I had to go home. I had to get help. I had to go and see the doctor. But I didn't want to do it. What would have been the ramification if I didn't do it? You know. And that for me, you know, when he says that whole thing about that help piece, you know, that's the bravest thing to do. That for me, we took a lot of courage to be able to be up front where I'd never talked about it before. I, you know, all self-talk, and then it came out. So, asking for help is a massive strength. But you again, it comes back to that vulnerability to be vulnerability piece to be honest with yourself when you need the help and when you are honest with yourself and go do you know what i want to do this myself but i can't you know 
I'm not saying I can't, but I'm struggling. I need some help, you know, because I don't like to, I don't like to use the word can't because I think we can, but we need some help along the way. And I think yeah. that's where the important piece is there. But Ryan, have you got anything else you want to add to that? No, I think you've covered it off. Covered it off well, mate, between the pair of you. All right. Should we carry on? Or we got mm. enough time for one more? Do you think? I don't know. One more, I think. One more, Jane. The horse and the fox and the mole together. Asking for help isn't giving up, said the horse. It's refusing to give up. I love that, by the way. It's refusing to give up. I love that. Sometimes I want to say, I love you all, said the mole, but I find it difficult. Do you, said the boy. Yes. So I say something like, I'm glad we're all here. Okay, said the boy. I'm glad we're all here, said the mole. We are so glad you are here too. And they're just on the horse now. What should we do? Asked the boy. That didn't sound good. So there's a storm brewing. It's a storm brewing. And they're running now, sort of, I think, trying to do something to deal with the storm that's coming. When the big things feel out of control, which is just like a storm, focus on what you love right under your nose, said the horse. And the horse said, and it says there, the storm will pass. I'm going to stop there because that for me is pretty significant. And then obviously you see a rainbow there when the storm is actually just passed there. So anything for you on that, guys? Anything? It's not always, it's not always going to be a dark day. Better days will come. Yeah, I would say agree with you. You know when times, I don't know whether you had times. I know I keep going, but I'm going back to the mental health thing again. Like when I was in that turmoil of the darkness, I didn't ever think there was going to be an end to it. I didn't know when there would be an end to it. Now, they, now there's this saying in, in the mental health world or in a self-development world, which is, this too shall pass. I don't I think it's a quote from someone. It we've will done, pass. We've done an episode on this, I think. Have we done it? Which we've we've, it? we've done an episode on this or Ooh, we've done a good okay. segment on an episode of this. That's what this is about. It's about, it's not going to last forever, right? Whatever difficulty you're going through right now, it's not going to last forever. My mental health is not going to last forever. The grief of my mum will be there forever, but it will not be as sharp as it will be it, not right now. It will be, it, I will deal with it. And I know Ryan talked about, we talked about that grief episode and, you know, other people have been through this. Other people have been through mental health. And so if we can take, if we can just imagine that whatever you're going through now, someone in the world has gone through that already. So if someone's gone through it, that means you can make it too. Yeah. And that for me is a big lesson from this book is that no matter how bad it gets, you, you can make it through. You can make it through. You just got to hold on, you know, just, just, just do those things. A bit of, it's a lot of resilience story, isn't it? Really? It's like, a, you know, that piece of work where we're just trying to move forward, just trying to just inch forward each day. And, and sometimes we're going to fall off the horse. I'm going to use that as a metaphor, but it's just about how we get back up again, because it is going to be difficult. And there's no, I'm not going to say to anybody, I would never wash, mental health issues on anybody because it's really difficult and really challenging. But if you ever do get them or you suffer grief like I've gone through this year, you will get through it. And this is why I'm sharing. Actually, it helps me to share this stuff because it helps me process. It keeps me on point to say that, hey, if I'm having a bad day, like Ryan says, you will, you know, you may not think you're going to get through it, right, on that, but you, you will if you just hold on and hang in there. And that's why I love that. So that's my piece anyway. There you go. I love that. I think that's a great summary on it. And you're right. It is. It's. I think we talked about it before the good and the bad. It's all temporary. Yeah, and actually, it's a bit of a stoic philosophy. Actually, good and bad's going to happen, but that's that's what the rhythm of life is. You're going to have, like you said, Lee. I think and Ryan, you you get ups. You, you're going to get downs. You're going to have ups. You're going to have. You, it's going to happen. So it's just remembering that what's good. You know, you will. The bad will come. It's just got to be prepared for it. Um, and it's a Absolutely. very stoic place. Yeah, go on, Lee. You're going to say. Great. Now I was going to say it's a great message there. So, how far through are we, Joe, on this? I think we could probably cover off one more episode. Yeah, we'll one do. We'll decide whether we do we're that. We're not going to do like yeah, a Robin Sharma. Sorry, Lee. Go on. I say we'll decide whether that's next week or we have a gap and then we do another one. But yeah, like you said, this this won't turn into twenty seven episodes no. at the end. <laughs> no, Ryan. Ryan will go go spare. He'll go bloody not another. Which... The fact we're going to three is already winding me up. <laughs> And he's only been on the first one. He wasn't yeah, on the... This is the only one. I've been on. There is a brilliant series of about eight episodes on Lessons from Life back in the archive. People go back and make sure you you listen to those. It was very uh... early in our career. That was year two. We're about to be in year five. Part part of the journey. Part very of the journey, true. right? 
<laughs> but we do, everyone out there listening, we thank you for supporting us again at Listen to N, Listen to You, I N on Twitter. Joe is all over social media. Just look for Jose Noy Inspiration Nation, J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation on TikTok if you want to follow, get involved with the show. And as you reference, there is a whole archive of nearly four years worth of shows there. There's been a lot of activity in there this week. So when people catch up to now, we thank you for, for that. And if you want to dive back in, see the previous episodes, be a part of our journey that we've gone on with this as well. And of course, if you like what we're doing, head over to inspirationnation.org.uk. Yep, details of coaching service, sign up for Joe's newsletter merchandise i am sporting my hoodie today joe has got his t-shirt on as well loads of great merch over there and most importantly to support us leave us a review hit that five star button hit subscribe all of that really helps with what we are doing can i give a shout out can i give a shout out can absolutely give a shout out so hartley just got the number one gifter badge so thank you for that hartley sent a love you something it's like a love heart with something in it and Shay Mitchell 785 followed us. So appreciate thank that, you guys. so much. That is that. all from live interaction on TikTok. Again, get on, follow Joe, and you can be involved too. Right, I'll count us down and we'll be back again next week for episode 201. Wow. Inspiration. 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 Catch you guys Catch you later. Guys later. Nice later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions of what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.